Carey Show. <laughs> And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, let's look in on that little town of Melrose Springs, home of that popular radio entertainer, Honest Harold, the homemaker. It's early morning now, and we find our hero just about to leave home for his his day's labors. And just bursting with energy and puffed rice. Well, Mother, I'm off to work. Now you're going early this morning, Harold. Yeah, I want to get a flying start. I'm going to do a lot of thinking today. You are? You bet. Mother, I've made up my mind I'm going to win this year's Civic Achievement Award. Achievement Award? Mm Mm-hmm. It's given to the person who thinks of the best idea for improving Melrose Springs. The winner gets a statuette. Just like that Hollywood Oscar mother. Only we call ours an Oswald. Oh. It was named after our first mayor, Oswald Boomer. (laughs) Oh, yes. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something, son. You bet I will. Of course, my boss, Stanley Peabody, thinks he's going to win it. I've just got to beat old prissy pants. Oh, no, Harold. When are they going to make the award? Oh, tomorrow night, I think. The lieutenant governor is coming down to present it. They're going to have a swanky banquet at the Antler Hotel. Very classy. You get a demi tassie. <laughs> oh, Harold, I'd be so proud if you brought home the Oswald. We could put it on the mantel, right between Grandpa and the stuffed owl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just think, Mother, an Oswald on our mantel. I'll feel just like Betty Davis. Peter, Peter, Peter. Give me the letter, Peter. <laughs> that, son? Or, Mr. Christian, there's another mutiny on the bounty. I'll have you hanging from the highest yard arm in His Majesty's Navy. Oh, I just love James Cagney. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Better get started, Mother. Goodbye, son. Oh, I'd love to be an actor. Farewell, Mother. I go to smell the calla lilies. Farewell. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I wonder about Harold. Honest boy, though. Well, the old 36 Essex is really perking along this morning. Sure lucky I bought it when I did. You can't get him anymore. Yes, sir. You can have those new cars. Just give me a... Beef. <laughs> Darn car. What's the matter now? Wonder if that rubber band slipped off the carburetor again. <laughs> Come on, Essie. <laughs> Sounds like it got influenza of the fan belt. <laughs> Darn it, just when I want to get to work early, too. Oh, brother. Hello, Harold! <laughs> Ye gods. Old Doc Yak Yak and his horse and buggy. Oh, children. Oh. <laughs> Hello, you old horse doctor. Having car trouble, Harold? No, no, Doc. Just parked here to watch the Rose Bowl parade. Oh, <laughs> really? I didn't know it came up this street. <laughs> <laughs> Be glad to give you a lift, Harold. Huh? No, thanks, Doc. Doc, tell me, why do you go to town every morning? You closed your veterinarian office years ago. Oh, I know, Harold. It's just that Silver Moon enjoys the trip so much. <laughs> I haven't got the heart to tell her I've retired. Well, don't you tell her, Harold. Oh, no, I won't say a word. Well, thank you. <laughs> What's that, Silver Moon? Oh, all right, dear. <laughs> uh, she's impatient to get started, Harold. Oh? She likes to go down to the depot and see the nine o'clock express come in. <laughs> she loves to wave at the engineer. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, goodbye, Harold. Get up, Silver Moon. Show Harold your knee action. Look at those knees. Haven't seen knobs like that since I worked at the doorknob factory. <laughs> come on, Essie. Where's your pride? 
Are you going to let a horse get the best of you? Yeah, I knew that would get her. <laughs> Good old Essie, plowing through the snow just like a snow plow. Oop, what's that contraption blocking the street up there? Oh, my goodness, it's old man Walker driving his tractor through the town again. He's certainly got a nerve, driving right in the middle of the street, five miles an hour. Got a good mind to ram him right in his oat spreader. <laughs> hey, Mr. Walker, out of my way, I'm in a hurry. What's the matter, Sonny? I said, would you please move over? What do you say? <laughs> I said, would you please kindly... He gods now, he stopped. <laughs> right where I can't get around him. I want to get out and give him a piece of my mind. Look at that sign he's got on the back. Keep your distance. This tractor is jet propelled. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Walker? Hi, Sonny. Do you know that you're a menace to traffic driving that tractor down the street? No. Well, I guess I was speeding a little. Speed? <laughs> you understand. You're blocking traffic with that hot rod harvester. Oh, I am? Certainly. Now, why don't you drive your automobile to town? Well, this beats an automobile any day. Never have any blowouts, and I can shuck a little corn as I go. Why don't you give up that tractor? Everybody else drives an automobile like mine back there. Like yours? Eh, I'll stick to my tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that heap? Army surplus? <laughs> hey. Yeah, look, Mr. Walker, I've got to get to work. I'm in a bit of a hurry. What do you stand here talking to me for? It's kind of silly. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Will you please get moving and speed it up a little bit? Okay, I'll rev her up to six miles an hour. <laughs> well, I put on my Barney Oldfield cap and my goggles. He gods, he's got them. <laughs> Have I got a clear track ahead? Yes. Okay, stand back, I'm off. You sure are. And darn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. <laughs> Oh, what a character. Yeah, howdy, Harold. Oh, hello, Pete. Hey, you're just the man I want to see. You're supposed to be the town marshal. That's right, boy. Then why don't you enforce the regulations? Walker's tractor goes so slow it holds up traffic. Now, there must be some kind of a law against it. And I just relax, boy. I got the municipal code book right here in my pocket. Yeah, good. <clears throat> Let me see here. Pages are falling out. <laughs> Covers a little crack. So's the police force. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Here we are. Melrose Springs traffic regulations. When two vehicles meet at intersection, the covered wagon has the right of way. Would you mind turning to the up to date section? Okay. Here it is. Uh, traffic regulations revised. Good. What does it say? Stanley steamers will refrain from blowing steam while passing the city hall. What? The steam keeps taking the press out of the mayor's pants. Ain't that a dude? <laughs> Pete? <laughs> Only kidding, boy. Uh, isn't there anything in there about tractors? Nope. Don't see anything in here about slow-moving vehicles. The slowest-moving vehicle I know is a Pete. A Pete? What year did they put them out? Oh, was that the model with no headlight? No, that was the model with no head. Take a bow. Goodbye. Good morning, Station Case JP. I'll connect you. Uh, good morning, Gloria. Oh, good morning, Harold. You're late. Oh, thank you for telling me. You're welcome. You know, I was late this morning, too. I overslept. Oh? Didn't your alarm go off? Yes, it went off while I was asleep. Yeah. <laughs> I've got news for you. You're still asleep. Oh, well, you know the old saying, early to bed, early to rise, but I'd rather stay up and go out with guys. <laughs> Please, now, I've got a good excuse for being late. I got stuck behind old man Walker and his tractor. Oh? There ought to be a law against... See? That's right. 
There ought to be a law. What? Sure. Barring all slow-moving vehicles from the streets of Melrose Springs. Speed up traffic. Now, that would be a real civic improvement. Glory, I bet that idea will win me the Oswald. Oh, but Mr. Peabody thinks he's going to win it just because he's mayor. Yeah, we'll see about that. I think I'll go in and tell Mayor Peabody about my idea right now. Oh, I hope you win the award. I will. And just think, Gloria, I'll have that Oswald on my mantle, just like all those Hollywood stars. Listen to this, Gloria. Mr. Christian, if there's another mutiny on the bounty, I'll have you hang from the highest yard arm in His Majesty's Navy. Oh, that was wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Mickey Rooney. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, well, I deserve it. Won't tell Stanley this is my idea at first, though. He just turned it down. I'll be clever about this. Hope Pickle Face is in. Come in. Yeah, he is. Oh, it's you. Yes, sir. Stanley. Silence. Can't you see I'm blowing up my seat cushion? Yeah. Always knew he was a big wind. There. Yeah, Stanley, the left side's uh, sagging a little. Be brief, Hemp. But you're sagging, too, so it's all right. I'm working on my acceptance speech for the banquet tomorrow night. Oh? I'll win the Oswald, of course. Yeah, that's what he thinks. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, you know what a nuisance old man Walker is, that tractor of his, blocking traffic all the time? Yes, I know, Hemp. Well, a very smart fellow I know had an idea. He thinks you ought to pass a law barring all vehicles that can't go 15 miles an hour. Hemp, that's an excellent idea. Yeah, I got him. Uh, will it take long for you to pass the law, Mr. Mayor? Of course not. As mayor, I move the law be passed. I second the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye, the law's passed. Well, that's one way to beat a filibuster. Now, Hemp, who was the intelligent man who thought of that law? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? You passed it, Stanley. I stepped on a crack. You can't take it back. Yeah. Mm, all right. And that's a civic improvement. I'll bet I win that Oswald tomorrow night. Hemp, that was pretty underhanded. You ought to be shot for that. Yeah, I better get out of here before he makes that a law. Well, I sure put one over in Stanley this morning. Guess I'll go home and tell Mother to dust off the mantle for Ozzy. Oh, there's Doc and his horse. Hello, Doc. I'll race you in Silver Moon home. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Hamp. Doc, what's the matter? Nothing, except I can't drive Silver Moon downtown anymore. Oh, why not? Eh, it's a new law, barring slow-moving vehicles that a certain fathead thought of. Ooh, that's me. But, Doc, can't Silver Moon go 15 miles an hour? No, she got up to nine and a half once with a strong tailwind. <laughs> Gee, Doc, I, I didn't Her think... pride is hurt. Why, they got her classified as a tractor. <laughs> I know just how you feel, dear. But, Doc, Silver Moon, I didn't know this would happen. Honest, Silver Moon, we're still friends, aren't we? <laughs> Oop. And that goes for me, too, Hare. Oh, Doc. Any man who'd let his friends down just to win an Oswald. But, fellas, I didn't know it would turn out this way. Uh, never again will Silver Moon prance down Main Street... Stop at the butcher shop and nibble on Mr. Keeler's ham hocks. Doc, I didn't mean... Just it. look at that poor horse. Tears running down her cheeks so hard her shoes are rusting. <laughs> see you later, Doc. I can't stand to see a horse cry. We will return for the second act of our story, Honest Herald, in just a moment. On CBS this evening, Bing Crosby will play host to Tony Arden and the Firehouse Five Plus Two. Bob Hope will drop in and tune up with Bing for It Happened in Monterey. The Bing Crosby Show will come your way just a little later on most of these same CBS stations. And now, back to Harold Perry as Honest Herald, the homemaker. <laughs> Well, yesterday morning, Honest Harold made his bid to win the Oswald for the best contribution to the civic improvement of Melrose Springs. He got Mayor Stanley Peabody to pass a law. 
Oop. But Honest Harold didn't realize that his law would ground Doc's horse, Silver Moon. I certainly didn't. Doc will never forgive me. <laughs> Neither will Silver Moon. And their friendship means more to me than an Oswald any old day. I'm going right down to get Stanley to repeal that law. Don't worry, Silver Moon, I won't let you down. <laughs> Now, Hemp, yesterday you wanted me to pass this law. Now this morning you want me to repeal it. Why don't you make up your mind? Well, you see, Stanley, um, Mr. Mayor, I didn't know it would keep Doc's poor old horse off the street. You see, she slowed down a little. Well, you know what they say, Hemp. You can't put new spark in an old plug. <laughs> well, that's very clever. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> so you're going to repeal the law, Your Honor? No, I'm not. Oh, but Stanley... Won't be any trouble. All you have to do is bang your gavel again. <clears throat> Even though you thought of it, Hemp, that happens to be a good law, and it stays on the books. You know, Stanley, this law might win me the Oswald at the banquet tonight. Oh, I doubt it, Hemp. Do you think they'd give the award to a nincompoop? I don't know, Stanley. We'll see if you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, it's going to be awfully hard to face Doc and Silver Moon. I hope you'll speak to me. Come in. Oh, hello, Doc, old pal. Oh, hello, Air. <laughs> Doc, I just tried to get Stanley to change that speed law, but he wouldn't do it. Oh. I'm really sorry about all this. You know I wouldn't hurt you and Silver Moon for all the world. Oh, sure, Harold. I know you didn't mean to do it. <laughs> How is Silver Moon? She's out in the barn taking a nap. She didn't sleep a wink last night. Oh. Now, I was up with her all night holding her hoof. <laughs> Gosh. Barred from the streets like a common tractor. <laughs> and to think she was once a racehorse. Yeah. Silver Moon was a racehorse? Oh, yes, until she had to give it up. Oh, I didn't know that. Why, her mother was that famous racehorse Mel Batos. Yeah. Yeah, and her father was Graham Cracker. <laughs> they were both related to Sea Biscuit. <laughs> Say, Doc, maybe we could put Silver Moon in training again. Why? Huh? We ought to be able to get her to speed up to 15 miles an hour. An old Cracker, I mean an old racehorse like her. Yeah, I don't know her. Not it's I... worth a try, Doc. We can give her a workout right now in the backyard. We'll make her think she's a racehorse again. You be the timer and I'll be the jockey. Well, she's never carried that much weight. But it might work, Harry. Oh, you bet it will. Come on, Doc. It's time for the big race. Here comes Silver Moon. <laughs> ah, there. I, I got the saddle on her, Harold. Now, are you all ready? You bet. This race will be once around the barn. All right. <laughs> Just look at Silver Moon wearing her racing colors again. Yeah. Turquoise and shocking pink. <laughs> well, you're pretty excited, aren't you, girl? <laughs> and <laughs> she's got her confidence back already. What? Yeah, she just told me to bet two dollars on her. <laughs> to show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Come on, Doc, let's get started. All right, Harold, you're the jockey. Now you go on and get on her. Okay. Brother, look at that sway back. Looks like a Hudson. When you get on, you step down. <laughs> yeah, only kidding, Silver Moon. <laughs> well, here goes. Pull still. There. Oop, my feet are dragging. <laughs> now you time us, huh, Doc? Yeah, okay. All right. Are you ready with the starting bell? Yeah, yeah, I got the alarm clock all set here. Now, wait a minute. Uh, it, hold on. That's time, Harold. Good. Ring the bell, Doc. Okay. The horse is at the post. She's off. For heaven's sake, Silver Moon, get a move on. Silver Moon is approaching the first turn. She's certainly taking your time about it. Come on, Silver Moon. Silver Moon, what are you stopping for? Doc, what's the matter with this horse? She's running the wrong way. Well, she always did that, Harold. That's why she had to give up racing. Oh! <laughs> Silver Moon, turn back. Hi-ho, Silver Moon. Silver Moon, look 
where we are, right in the middle of the town. Come on, let's turn around and go home before somebody sees us. Oop, she stopped. And right in front of the police station. Come on, so... Hemp? Oh, hello, Stanley. Well, Hemp, I caught you, didn't I? What? Do you realize that horse is breaking the law? Your law? But Stanley... As mayor, I have my duty to perform. I'm going to have to put that horse in jail. Oh, no. Oh, Pete, come out here. Coming, Mayor. Stanley, please. Well, hello, Harold. <laughs> How's the weather down there? Yeah. <laughs> Pete, I want you to put this horse in jail. How's that again? She's broken the new traffic law. Arrest her, Pete. Oh, Shaw, Mayor, I couldn't do that. My goodness, Silver Moon's a friend of mine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't do it, Pete. Pete, you're the marshal. Do your duty. Yes, sir. Come on, Silver Moon. <laughs> Don't worry, Silver Moon. I'll get you out of jail. Look in your bale of hay tonight. There'll be a saw in it. <laughs> Pete, this is ridiculous. You can't do this. A horse in a police station? I'm sorry, Harold. It's the law. I got a booker. Have a chair, Silver Moon. It... <laughs> Good sick. Besides, Harold, it's nice and warm in here. Look how it's snowing outside. Why, she'd catch her death of cold out there, wouldn't you, Silver Moon? <laughs> well, Pete, whatever you're going to do, will you please get a move on? Now, just a minute, boy. i got to fill out a form. Uh. Yeah, now let's see here. Name of prisoner. You know her name, Pete. Silver Moon. Silver Moon. Let me write that down. Oh, for heaven's sake. Age of prisoner. Sweet 16 and never been kissed. Never been kissed. Let me write that down. Pete. Sex of prisoner. <laughs> Let me see you write that down. <laughs> Pete, if you aren't the most exasperate... Yep. I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you, Stanley. Well, perhaps I was a bit hasty having the horse arrested, but we all make mistakes, Harold. Harold? The fact of the matter is, Harold, we're having a blizzard outside. There are piles of snow all over the street. Why don't you go stick your head in one? No, you don't understand. The lieutenant governor is coming to give the Oswald Award at the banquet tonight. If this snow keeps up, the streets will be blocked and he won't be able to get through. Well, that's too bad, Stanley. I just thought if Silver Moon would pull the snow plow... She's our only chance. Well, so you want Silver Moon to plow up the snow for you, huh? Well, she refuses. Don't you, Silver Moon? <laughs> Good. Well, she's going to if I have to take her out there myself. Hey, what? Now, 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 hold on there, Mayor. My goodness, that'd be helping a prisoner to escape. And that's pretty serious. <laughs> I might even have to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Pete. Yeah, well, hemp. Looks like you've got me in a corner. Yeah. Uh, what are your terms? Well, now let me think. Well, Stanley, you can have Silver Moon if you repeal that stupid law you passed. Oh, all right. It's repealed. Yeah, good thing he brought his gavel. <laughs> and another thing, Stanley, Silver Moon has to be the guest of honor at the banquet tonight. What? Now look here, it's Hemp. It's snowing awfully hard out there, Stanley. Oh, all right. She can come to the banquet tonight. Come on, Silver Moon. <laughs> well, Stanley, look at that. Silver Moon likes you. Oh, she does? Yeah. She says you have a face just like her father's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is just wonderful, Harold. I tell you the truth, I don't know how to thank you for all that you've done for me and Silver Moon. That's all right, Doc. Uh-oh, look out. <clears throat> Stanley is going to make a speech. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> as mayor, I am proud to introduce our distinguished guest of the evening. Oh, Chrissy Pants. <laughs> he is the man who will present the Oswald for outstanding civic achievement in Melrose Springs. The Lieutenant Governor of our fair state, Charles B. Crane. All right, come on, sit down, Stanley. Thank you, citizens of Melrose Springs. Hemp, 
What is it, Stanley? Silver Moon is eating my dinner. Well, that's what you get for putting the a la carte before the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, on arriving in Melrose Springs this blustery evening, I was told the story of how the streets of your city were kept open by the prompt and decisive action of your wonderful mayor, Stanley Peabody. <laughs> And believe me, this was a real a civic achievement. Now, you hear that, Hemp? He's getting ready to give me the Oswald. Well, whoopee for you. <laughs> and so I thought Mayor Peabody certainly deserved the award. Yes, I suppose I do deserve it. Yes, I suppose I do deserve it. <laughs> and then I thought of the one who was really responsible for accomplishing this task. What? <laughs> and I came to the decision that the Oswald for civic achievement should go to your friend and to my friend, Silver Moon. Oh, dear. Yippee, Silver Moon. Why, you won the Oswald. Congratulations, Doc. <laughs> okay, how about a speech, Silver Moon? <laughs> and a girl, Silver Moon. Now you're talking real horse sense. <laughs> Say, Harold, huh? here's a telegram that just came for you. Oh, a telegram. Wait, let me see that. Well, here, I'll read it to you. Yeah, I can read, but you go ahead. That's what it says here. <laughs> it says, it says, uh, dear Mr. Perry. Yeah, you can read. <laughs> With great anticipation, we invite you to be our special guest and master of ceremonies at the annual March of Dimes Benefit Fashion Show to be held this coming Saturday in Salt Lake City. This coming Saturday? Well, that's February the 3rd, isn't it? Inasmuch as uh, you have many, many friends in this area who will be delighted to see you in person, well. your visit will help greatly in our fight against polio. Mm. P.S. Bring Honest Harold with you. He's a great guy. Let me see. Can I do that? Oh, yeah, I guess I'll have to. <laughs> and it's signed by Alvin G. Pack, campaign chairman, Salt Lake County, March of Dimes. Well, I'll be happy to be there, Bob. Uh, see you later, folks. It's a really a great cause. So long and good night. You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Parley Bear, Cliff Arquette, David Light, Olin Soleil, and Jack Moyles, and featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Norman McDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. Who? Oh, yes. <laughs> Deborah Carr and Paul Douglas come to CBS tomorrow evening to star in the Hallmark Playhouse and Suspense, respectively. In the Playhouse, Miss Carr will be heard in a new adaptation of James Hilton's celebrated novel, Goodbye, Mr. Chips. On Suspense, Paul Douglas will star as a postmaster who receives a tip that a time bomb filled with high explosive has been sent through the mails. CBS cordially invites you to hear Paul Douglas on Suspense and Deborah Carr on The Playhouse on most of these same stations tomorrow evening. Stay tuned now for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. Good night. Bob Lamon speaking. This is CBS, where Edward R. Murrow and Hear It Now come to you on Friday evening, the Columbia Broadcasting System.